Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to talk about storage devices. This comes from the CompTIA requirements on the A plus essentials exam 220-701. The first section, section 1.1 says that we need to categorize storage devices and backup media. And this deals with something called FDDs and HDDs. They abbreviate almost everything on these documents that you get from CompTIA. We'll talk about optical drives, and we'll also talk a lot about removable storage that's on our systems. Let's start with talking about these floppy disk drives. That's what that FDD stands for. And you really don't see floppy drives much anymore. They are a technology that throughout many years, they've changed from these 8-inch disks that you see here to 5 and a quarter inch and lastly, these three and a half inch that were popular most recently. But it's even hard now to find a new machine that has these floppy drives even in them. Usually these days have to get a USB connected drive and just connect it that way so that you're able to read and write floppy drives that you might have if you don't have them on a system already. And if you look at a floppy drive, you can see it's, it's pretty big. It's three and a half inches. That's why we get that size. And I can fit 1.44 megabytes. That's megabytes. That's not gig. That's 1.4 meg on a single disk. Obviously, the very small USB keys that we use today, those flash drives, store gigabytes and gigabytes of data. So you can see now why floppy disk drives really aren't used much anymore. But if you run into a legacy machine, it probably has a floppy drive in there. And you may run into some situations where people have piles of these floppy drives sitting around, floppy disks sitting around with good data on them, documents they might need. If they do, you may want to work on migrating them over to another type of storage medium as quickly as possible because it's becoming more and more difficult to even find floppy disk drives out there in the wild with these new machines. When we think about storage on most machines today, it's hard drives. It's hard disk drives that people are using to store data. Hard disk drives come in some pretty standard formats. The drives that you'll see inside of machines are these 3 and a half inch drives that you might see. These are three different kinds of drives that uh, you might see inside of your machine. These happen to be different formats. There is a SATA drive, which is here on the top. There is a PADA drive here in the middle. At the bottom is a SCSI drive, which isn't necessarily mentioned on the latest version of the CompTIA a certification requirements. But I had this picture anyway. I thought I'd show you the differences between these interfaces on all three. And so it's one way you can look at a drive and see what kind of drive is it. But notice they're exactly the same size. So I could put them into the same type of structure inside of my computer. They'll fit inside exactly the same rack. Even if it's SATA or PADA or SCSI, doesn't matter. They'll still fit in the same form factor. These drives themselves and the interfaces do, do look a little bit differently, and they work completely different between these different drive types. Even though they use exactly the same form factor, the SATA drive, the PADA drive, and the SCSI drives have completely different technologies that's used on the drive and on the motherboard or drive controller of your system. So you can't swap out a PADA for a SATA and vice versa. They are very different drives in the technology and how they work. The latest technologies of drives you'll run into is something called solid state drives, where you don't have these moving parts, these, these platters that would spin and arms that would come out and read data like an old record player. Instead, our latest kind of drives are these memory-only drives. The type of information there, there's no moving parts whatsoever. It's all solid state technology. It's all memory chips and the controllers that read the data from memory. And because of that, they're very, very fast methods of storing data and retrieving data. But they're also very expensive when you compare it on a per gigabyte basis. Or they might be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy an SSD drive where I could spend exactly the same amount of money for a traditional hard drive and have 10 times the space available on the system. So you'll see the prices of SSD drives will drop as time goes on. And eventually, we move, may move everything over to SSD drives. But in the meantime, we've got a choice. We could buy machines that have SSD drives that are expensive and don't have a lot of space. Or we have the traditional hard drives, which have a lot of space on them. Not quite as expensive, but slower technologies in the way that they work. Let's look inside a disk, a hard drive itself, and look at the geometry inside of it and see how this thing's really made up. Hard drives themselves have a lot of different components to them. This platter that's here is something that just spins. This is a magnetic type tech technology that's used to store data back and forth on this platter. And normally, you don't see it like this. Normally, it is contained 
all within a single place. There's a, a, a cover that goes over the top and there's a very filtered airflow that goes between all of these systems. So no dust or anything could get inside of this environment because that platter has on top of it this, this spindle that it's spinning around and there's not a lot of room between the head that's on there, that platter reading the data and dust and, and anything that gets on there can create a problem with reading. So it's a very clean environment inside of your hard drive. Once you take the top off, hard drive's no good anymore. And it spins at different speeds, 5,400 revolutions per minute or 7,200 7, revolutions per minute or even 10,000 revolutions per minute. The different drives spin at different rates. Generally, the faster it spins, the faster the access of the data is going to be. What you have also on the drive is something called an actuator. And this is in charge of moving this arm back and forth across the drive platter itself so that you can access data. That arm at the end of it has a head. And that head is what is responsible for reading these magnetic ones and zeros that are being written onto this platter. And so the platter is spinning and the actuator is causing the arm to go back and forth and back and forth and read that data all the time. You can see now why a solid state drive where you're immediately accessing the data would naturally be a lot faster. But this hard drive technology has been around for so long. It's incredibly reliable, and it is able to store so much information in such a small place that it's really the primary form of, of data storage that we have on our computers today. Here's a close-up version of that drive. You can see it looks like the head is really sitting right on top of the platter. And if the platter isn't spinning, that's really what it's doing. It's a, a very small bit of air that's sitting just above that spinning uh, drive platter where the head just kind of floats there and, and is able to read the drive itself. So you're dealing with very precise measurements, very precise technology. That's why whenever you're working with a laptop or working with a computer, you don't want to jostle that computer around a lot because your head can hit up against the top of that drive on top of the platter and really create problems. Notice there are heads not only on the top, but there's heads and arms that go underneath too. So you can access multiple columns, multiple cylinders, we call it, of the drive simultaneously. Just a faster way to read data if I have multiple heads across multiple platters, read them all at the same time, and I can access the data that much quicker. Whenever you start looking at the way a drive is laid out, it, you're going to see a lot of different names associated with the way the drive is configured. And what I'm looking at here is a drive where I'm just drawing lines across the drive to give you a feel that these are the tracks within the, the drive itself. Obviously, the tracks are very small. There's many, many, many tracks on a single drive on a top of a platter, on a single side of a platter. And I'm just giving you an example of here of what a track might look like. There are four tracks I've laid out here. Obviously, there are many, many more because we're dealing with very, very small amounts. Now, if we look all the way through here, if we were to take a can and push it all the way through this or take that track and send it all the way through each platter, that would be a cylinder. And so all of the arms within the hard drive all are on the same cylinder at the same time. So if you need data from the top platter, you're going to have to move the arm over. But if you need data from another platter and another, another track, the arm's going to have to move back. And so your hard drive has to keep track of where all the data is and know how to access all of it. And it's really up to the speed of that arm and the speed of the data going by to determine how quickly you can get to the data.